Jasmine Candidate here. You are listening to the Trips and Global on Wheels Podcast Hour, the place to be to learn about the latest and greatest life stories from people who are doing incredible disability advocacy work. Welcome to the Trips and Global on Wheels podcast hour. I'm so happy you're able to participate. Yes, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, of course. So it's so, it, I think it's always so awesome to find another fellow, you know, wheelchair user who loves traveling. I know you've been all over the place. Uh, you've been really adventurous. And so just for our, you know, listeners and viewers who are not too familiar with you, um, do you mind just giving us a brief background? Yeah, anything you're comfortable sharing? Yeah, no problem. So I have a spinal cord injury. I was in a car accident when I was 14, two weeks before my 15th birthday. My family was driving to a reunion and just got caught in a horrible monsoon rainstorm and rolled off the side of the road and I was thrown out of the back of the car. I was hospitalized at um, Latter-day Saints in Utah um, in ICU for about a month and then, you know, all the rehab and, and so on. I, I did homeschooling for the next six months when I when I came home, um, but then I went back to school just like normal, graduated on time, and got a scholarship to the University of Southern California, which I graduated there with honors, and after that, uh, started a job um, working at this place called Wente Vineyards, which is a, a beautiful winery out here in, in Northern California. to keep a record so I didn't have to remember every little detail in case I wanted to go back and visit a destination again. Um, I would already have kind of, you know, a good starting point. So I started doing that um, just on, you know, like a Word document, but I quickly realized I needed to make it a website. I didn't know how to do that. So I built my first one in Dreamweaver, um, very painstaking process in, in Dreamweaver, um, not going to school for any of this type of stuff. So self teaching myself how to build a website, which was challenging and a lot of heart attacks and, and so on. But I always imagined the website to be a community um, just because I knew I couldn't go anywhere or absolutely everywhere in the world. I'm not gonna be able to stay at every hotel. I don't have every interest that every single person in the world has. So I really wanted to create a community where people could share their information, their stories, their backgrounds, their interests um, from all their different disability um, or limited mobility standpoints, um, just so we could build a record. So when people do wanna go traveling, people are not spending so much time, one, researching, maybe even getting false information, or calling hotels, calling visitors bureau, calling ranger stations, and just not getting the full picture, if maybe not any information at all. You can actually get the real time information from people in wheelchairs who have, you know, pushed, you know, pushed those trails, who have pushed, you know, those routes, and really kind of get a better understanding what to expect so you can plan accordingly. So whether or not, you know, you wanted to do like a backpacking adventure, you know, around the states or Europe or whatnot, or you wanted to go on a formal tour, I wanted to be able to connect you with however you wanted to travel, solo, family, friends, tour, individually, you know, because we all have different ideas on what, what we need. And sometimes traveling isn't just about adventures. Sometimes it's about business or family engagements or something like that. So I just really wanted to create a platform that was accessible <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, that's, it's wonderful. You know, as you were sharing with us a, a little bit ago that it was a car accident that, um, you know, injured you. And uh, so that's how you entered the disability community. And I understand your mom also has a disability now. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so so in the in the accident, actually, my, my father was killed and my mother was severely crippled. So she was in the front seat and her legs were just completely smashed underneath the dashboard. So she has rods and pins and, you know, she can't walk very far for very far distances, has had multiple surgeries, you know, her bone went through her leg and that kind of a thing. 
so she is, yeah, definitely technically disabled as well. Yeah, I can't even imagine, you know, not only, you know, the initial shock and process uh, of having to go, you know, go through the process of um, grieving for your father, which is a big thing altogether, and then having to um, seeing your mom injured, and then you being paralyzed. Um, you know, I don't want to victimize you and, or make you relive the events. Um, I think, I think it's important for people to understand what a huge change it was for you and your family. You know, it was, it was a triple, um, in a way it was kind of a triple tra tragedy, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah your definitely. mom and then Everything, the whole dynamic of our family changed. Um, even at that point, I, we were living in a two-story house. Um, and so when I came home back to the house, obviously I couldn't go up to my room Luckily, the town that I was living in was just absolutely phenomenal. We were, my family was very active in the community as well. We were very involved with sports and whatnot. So the community actually did a bunch of fundraisers in order to raise money to convert um, the bathroom downstairs to be wheelchair accessible. And they converted the, the dining room to be um, my bedroom. But it was it was hard it was ridiculously hard because i would wheel past you know that staircase and my bedroom was on the top of that staircase so anytime i would wheel by it was just such a painful reminder of you know this old life this old person that that i was mm -hmm. yeah and and you know with all of that that went on i think it's incredible i've, I've listened to a few of your interviews and you I don't want to sound like a cliche or sound like what every other person say to you, but I think it's, it's amazing how, you know, you had, you had this really great life and this really great family. I understand you were about to attend Stanford on a basketball scholarship and you did pretty well academically as well. And so it just, your whole life got am ambushed. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought my life had worked really hard you know, from a very young age with all my goals in one direction. And then in an instant, just like that, it was like, nope, this is your new path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just goes to tell you how you just never know. First of all, life is so unpredictable. And second of all, how strong human beings are just like by you, you are a living example in that all that you've done with wheelchair travel and other endeavors and other goals you have and also with such a positive and hopeful attitude. Um, I, I think that's amazing. I don't see any other way to live. Honestly, it's it doesn't seem like any, any fun. I, that doesn't seem like a really great existence to be really mad and upset and seeing all these restrictions to my life. I just want to know, okay, what, what can I do? What can I see? How can I, you know, be myself and experience the world and, you know, feel joy and feel love and give joy and love and, you know, make the world a better place. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it's not worth, yeah. Focusing on, all the negativity, but yeah, it's, it, it amazes me. I mean, it's, if I think about it, if I, if I take myself kind of like out of myself, you know, and I kind of look at myself from a bird's eye view, I can definitely understand. I'm like, wow, you know, like human beings are incredible. This is amazing. You know, people can just, there's no limit to what we can do. Um, oh gosh. And then it's just like on, on a day-to-day -day basis, sometimes I do though, you know, I forget how, how adaptive, you know, that I, I've become and how adaptive we as human beings can actually be that, you know, we can lose an arm, we can lose our ability to walk, you know, we can lose half our ability to, um, you know, maybe we have a stroke and our communication gets altered, but we can still keep going. There's so, especially nowadays, there are so many tools to help us and assist us. There's just no reason to, to stop, to stop living really. As I grow older and learn more about the world, I think a lot of what stops us is our mindset and what we know and what we don't know. And, um, 
and what we're able to imagine. So I wanted to I want to talk a little bit about dating, how people uh, perceive you, how people uh, and your understanding of dating as well, and how you look at others, and just yeah, tell us about how how dating has either changed or really not changed for you. After my injury, I was actually dating a guy at the time and um, we continued dating for about like another six months or so, but we definitely broke up because it, w- it was definitely a lot to to handle. You know, it was a big transition for, for both of us. Um, it was a difficult breakup, but you know, teenage breakups usually are pretty horrific. <laughs> um, uh, but it was, it was a definite change because um, you know, before my accident, you know, I could, I felt way more freedom with flirting with boys, you know, like running over to them, jumping on them, you know, sitting on their lap, you know, doing all just like the tips and tricks that us females know and, and do like pretend that we don't know that we're doing them, but we know what we're doing. And, um, and I, and I couldn't do that, especially being a, a a teenager at school, you know, at lunchtime, you have the quad, with everybody gathering for lunch and for me just to try to go over to a boy and like flirt with him or whatever it's I just had this sea of backpacks that I would have to move and you know everybody would just be constantly moving and then I would just have to be constantly moving backpacks and I'm like oh wait wait I just spent like five minutes navigating the path to get over to you and then he, he didn't see me at all you know like doing this and he just gets up to go get a soda or, or what have you and I missed my chance. Um, so that was that was definitely a, a rude awakening and also of course school dances and stuff that was also tough. I was voted best dancer in my class prior to my accident so not being able to communicate myself through dance and you know dancing with boys also being very flirtatious in that sense um, was was quite difficult. Um, but I did, I would say, I think it was my, my junior year of high school. Um, I think it was only maybe like an eight month period that I didn't have a boyfriend. Um, but then I was able to, I found, found a boyfriend. Um, I liked a couple guys uh, prior to finding this boyfriend, um, but it didn't work out. And I think it was 100% without a doubt because of the wheelchair. Um, they just didn't know like what to do with me. They were kind of weirded out by that because prior to the accident, I wouldn't have had a problem like getting a date or getting a guy to, to like me. And so it was really difficult at first. And I I felt, you know, very rejected that, you know, these guys weren't into me just because of the wheelchair. And I'm like, how is this actually going to work, you know, long-term? And I always felt very discouraged. I felt like the wheelchair basically, for lack of a better term, is kind of like a douchebag repellent guys who just are not confident in themselves like a a guy who is not mature enough couldn't handle me basically and so found one that that was that you know was kind and it was it wasn't a big deal I mean I felt nervous at at first you know when I first started dating him I would get in the car and I'm like oh no he's he's struggling to put my wheelchair in his car and that would just give me a heart attack you know I'm like oh it's taking so much time he's not going to want to date me because you know this is taking so much time to get the wheelchair in and out of the car he can't figure it out but you know it was never a big deal like he it would take some time but it was just all in my head that was the issue I was just nervous that you know I was putting him out, but it wasn't a big deal at all. And I actually broke up with him in college for a period of time because I said, hey, I need to date a couple people before we, you know, continue dating. So I dated around um, a little bit as well. Definitely, you know, there was some some nervous time. Yeah, definitely wasn't easy to find, you know, like guys. I couldn't just grab like whatever cute guy you definitely had to put on like your in your intuitional gut reaction like okay do you think like this person can like handle this you know but if there's a question about it like oh maybe they can maybe they can't give that person the benefit of the doubt but actually now i've been dating a guy for eight years now and he's in a wheelchair which i never thought i would do and i never thought that it could even work 
because I'm like, how do you hold hands? How do you like hug? How do you, how do you kiss and, you know, do the things that you do when you date people? So you just make it work. And it's, it's the same, you know, it's, it's, it's the same in a sense. I mean, like everything is different. Everything's the same in a sense in one way or another. But, um, you know, like, yeah, we'll go down the street, you know, and once we have a little momentum, like we'll hold hands or if we're in our power chairs, of course, then we can definitely hold hands if we're going down the street sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to hold hands. Um, but actually dating somebody in a wheelchair has been really great because um, we have to, it, it's forced us to become even more independent in a way too, where we don't have that extra person to rely on to pick up the extra slack or pick us up when we fell over or to carry our, our bag or, or whatnot when we're traveling. We have to take care of ourselves. Yeah, I, I've, I've said along the same things too, in regards to what you said about, you know, the douchebag filter. I think, I, I, yeah, I've had similar experiences. And so, it goes both ways too. I mean, it's not just guys. I mean, it's girlfriends too. Because there might be some girlfriends who can't deal with, you know, they're not mature enough and grounded enough in their own life and world to have a friend like you as well. So it goes both ways. It's a person thing. It's a douchebag person thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, in regards to challenges with, you know, social events that may have become awkward, um, how have you handled it over time and gotten maybe not gotten used to it but have adapted better it was definitely trouble troubling some when I first became paralyzed going anywhere and just all the stairs all the stairs everywhere and I just be like can I help you like do you have a question like what what um, and sometimes still like I will do that if I'm feeling kind of sassy. It's, it doesn't come from like a mean like bitter place. It just it pretty much just comes from like a sassy place, you know, just like a little know-it-all place like, ooh, like I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Like, can I help you? Like, just just ask me. Just ask me. Like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Just ask me your question already. <laughs> I know you have a question. Um, and I, I, yeah, I don't run from, from questions because I think it's really important for our society as a whole to grow, to not discourage people from asking questions, especially children. Cause I feel, yeah, it's, it's really important just to, just to be open and, you know, open and honest. We're all in this world together. We all have to work with one another period. And we all have to understand each other more and have empathy, empathy and kindness. And so we need to be able to understand each other. Exactly. Um, so I, I, I want to touch on another thing that you were talking about earlier. You were saying that you had never imagined that you would be dating a person who has a disability as well and uses a wheelchair. Um, and, you, you know, you didn't, you didn't know how, how the details would go. What, what do you think you have in this relationship that you weren't able to get in other relationships where you were, where they were able-bodied men or guys? Um, I would say definitely the the level of understanding and compassion is just even more so. I mean, the boyfriend that I had before was such a kind, sensitive person. He he would be the kind of guy he would see a, a grandmother with a bag of groceries or something like that that needs help crossing the street, and he would go out of his way to like help her. You know, that was the boyfriend that I had before that. Um, but I feel like in terms of really knowing what it's like to be disabled. Um, not even just like physically, but all like the mental stuff and emotional stuff that also goes along with that too, to having somebody who really understands some of these obstacles and frustrations where you don't have to explain yourself, you know, you don't have to, and I love traveling with him too, because, you know, people get nervous with one wheelchair and then you throw two wheelchairs at them and it's like, oh my gosh, people just people just lose their mind sometimes. <laughs> well, one, sometimes people don't know what to do in terms of transportation or having how to deal with us, or they're just shocked that we're, we can even travel alone, like together, you know, um, which is always kind of fun. I mean, it, it is fun kind of blowing people's minds that like, yeah, like we don't get help from an able-bodied person. We're doing it all ourselves. With that, I think that's a great way to wrap it up. Actually, this conversation has gone um, a little longer than I intended, but you had so many great things to say. Thank you so much for such a lively discussion. And I know that some of the things that we covered were 
hard to talk about and uncomfortable. Um, but I think it's important, especially for other individuals with disabilities who are especially in the beginning stages of their journey on and feeling overwhelmed about what's ahead and how to handle all of that. Yeah, and I would say for all, for all the newbies, it's just everything is going to be okay. Just have patience. Life is about learning more and more patience with yourself, with your surroundings, with other people. The more you're patient with yourself, the more you'll know yourself and the more you can freely express that and find ways to be and do in this world. Yeah, exactly. Beautifully said, Ashley. Ashley, thank you so much. My website again is wheelchairtraveling.com and my email is info at wheelchairtraveling.com. And I'm always looking for writers. I'm looking for volunteers, but I'm also looking for paid writers too. So if you need some extra cash, I have assignments for you. I have ideas. So email me, discuss, we can figure something out. Sounds like an amazing opportunity. Ashley, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Did you like this video? If so, share with your friends and be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want even more resources, be sure to sign up for our email updates on our website, traipsingglobal.com. Keep learning new perspectives. Keep being inclusive because it will make the world a better place for you and for everyone else. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on another episode of the Trips and Global on Wheels podcast hour.